Let us pray over the Word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father God, let the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing and edifying to you and your people. God, help me to discern your will in this message. And Lord, let, it, let me not preach to people, but help me to also preach to myself. Let this be a reminder, Lord God, of your goodness in our lives. Holy Spirit, we can't do it without you. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. Um, I want to read a passage of Scripture that we, most of you already memorized. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. How many of you know as we're walking through this thing called life there are opportunities uh where things latch on to us and it begins to hinder the work and plan of god in our lives anybody can identify with that amen i mean you know we we live in a real world with a real devil and real problems and but i thank god that he gives us an opportunity <clears throat> to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily and tangles and it says let us run with perseverance if we're going to finish this race we need perseverance the race marked out for us <clears throat> amen this is a race marked out for for us you know i i cannot run your race neither can you run mine and when we begin to get busy with you know looking and judging and criticizing other people's walk how many of you know we take our mind off of ours you know i did <clears throat> a run track a little bit and they just told you whatever you do don't look at your opponent if you're going forward, full blast, if, and that's why the next verse is, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. If he began this work, how many of you know it's only he can complete it? And it's when our, we take our eyes off of him, is then we begin to slow down and we get off track. <clears throat> so when running the race, you know, uh, the, the more you do this, how many of you know you're going to slow down? <laughs> that's why the people of Israel, they're told not to look back, <clears throat> but to move forward. And <clears throat> so we fix our eyes on him. I want to open up. <clears throat> I don't want it to be, a, at first, seem morbid or anything, but there's some passages of scriptures that uh, can run a little deep on our soul. Uh, <clears throat> um, the title of my message, and there's two titles. I'll give you one now, and I'll give you one in the middle. Is The title of my mess, the message, I don't want to call my message. I, want, I believe it's the Lord's, is One Life one life we only got we only get one shot at this can someone say amen do we make mistakes do we stumble along the way of course for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god. but you only got one chance i only got one chance to fulfill the god of, call of god on my life <clears throat> and in the end he's either going to say well done thou good and faithful servant enter in or away from me i never knew you I mean, he put perseverance in the book for a reason. And me, I mean, if at any time we need perseverance, it is now. You know, Sister uh, uh, June was saying the different obstacles they have to go through just to get to their destination. How many of you know we all got destiny marked on our lives? Has any of you reached your destination in the Lord? I guarantee you not in one of us, but we are headed towards that destiny, that destination. And there are obstacles that we're going to have to overcome. There are things we're going to have to avoid. <clears throat> and there's even some safety character checks and TSA that we got to go through. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> and we have one shot, one life at this. His mercies are on you every morning. If you fall, and get back up. But all I know, whatever you do, don't go back. Can someone say amen? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2, it says this, It is better to go to a house of mourning. I thought this verse was kind of strange to me. <clears throat> it says, It is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. That's kind of weird like i mean if you're gonna have to pick i don't want to go to a house that a bunch of people are crying and sad i want to go to a house where people are feasting i mean but not this verse <clears throat> and written by solomon you know the one of the wisest men of god <clears throat> in the bible and he says it is better to go to a house of the morning <clears throat> than to go to a house of feasting for death is the destiny of every man 
I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but l look at your neighbor and say, you're going to die one day. I mean, it's, it's, it's the fact. <clears throat> I mean, we can deny it, we can avoid it, but one day, from dust we came, from dust we return. And <clears throat> it says this. I I'm not going to say that if it's not in the book. It says, for death is the destiny of every man. And it says this, the living should take this to heart. The living should take this to heart. Basically, they're saying that, <clears throat> you know what, it is better to go to a house of mourning, and some be believe, commentators believe, they're talking about a funeral. It's, it's interesting to me that when, whenever I do funerals or I go to a funeral, the heart is open to eternal things. Can someone say amen? When we're going through this life and everything's going well and feasting and celebrating, for many, we don't think about the Lord. But when you're in the foxhole or, or when, when, you're, when, you're, when you're on your, your deathbed, how many of you know you ain't, you ain't thinking about a luau? Come on, somebody. You're thinking if you're going to make it to heaven or not. And you're going to be thinking, did I do everything God called me to do? <clears throat> they say, you know, when you go to your procession to a funeral, you're not going to see a, a U-Haul truck in the back hauling all your stuff. Amen? When you're on your deathbed, come on, somebody. I guarantee you, you're not going to check to see if your Netflix subscription is still good to go. I guarantee you're probably not going to be wasting, I'm not going to be wasting my time on you know, Facebook, Instagram, which I do. You know, we're not bashing that. But I'm just saying, when you're that close to eternity, then eternal things begin to matter. Can someone say amen? But why do we have to wait until we get in those situations? Why not today? That's why he says, it is better to go to a house of mourning where people are starting to think about eternal things. The living should take this to heart. <clears throat> Here's good news for you. You don't have to wait for that day. We can experience that right now. Lord, what is your call? What is my destiny? What is your plan for my life? Can someone say amen? I don't want to waste another minute. I don't want to waste another moment doing anything outside of God's will. Can someone say amen? Can he redeem the times? Yes, he can. But I'd rather him <clears throat> waste his grace on other stuff than from having to pick up my mess all the time. But does he do that? Yes, he does, because his mercies and his grace is unlimited. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> and Reinhard Bonnke said this. If you don't know who he is, he's probably the most greatest evangelist that the world has seen thus far. Till this day, his ministry has <clears throat> encountered actual, not just guessing, actual cards. 80 million people saved. Come on, somebody. That's his ministry, and we might look at it, get that video ready, ready later, <clears throat> Heather. And, you know, I mean, 80 million, I mean, and he said this thing. He says, <clears throat> you know, he was a young man, <coughs> and he was a young preacher, and <clears throat> he was at a conference, and went to a prayer meeting, and he saw an 80-year-old preacher at the altar <clears throat> in his prayer time, and, and he, the 80-year-old preacher was saying, Lord, just get anything out of me. Remove anything out of me that is not pure, that is not of you, so that I can finish strong. And this young Reinhard Bonnke in his 20s got convicted. He says, Lord, uh, whatever that man has at the age of 80, when I get there, may I still have that same kind of heart that you would remove anything in my life that would hinder your work in my life. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> So he said that mind in the beginning, like your mind, think about mind in the beginning, what matters in the end, can someone say amen? Right now, mind right now, let me think about it, mind right now, what matters in the end, can someone say amen? At the end of my life, will the things that I'm griping about, that I'm sweating about, that I'm worried about, is that really, really matters in the end? Come on, somebody. <clears throat> So in this verse, <clears throat> it says people should take heart, that people should live in a manner that recognizes their mortality. <clears throat> you know, when I was um, a little younger, not too few years ago, <laughs> and when people, you know, would complain about their arthritis and, you know, uh, <clears throat> they get older, you know, they feel pain in their body. I'm thinking, yeah, that, I'm not even thinking, that's never going to happen to me. <clears throat> Woke up the other morning, oh, I'm on my shoulder, man. I mean, I'm feeling some aches and pains. I know I look young and all, but no, I'm just kidding. 
You know? We live in a fallen world. Come on, somebody. This, though outwardly we're wasting away. Come on. Inwardly we're being renewed day by day. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> Proverbs says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who praises the, praise the Lord should be <clears throat> uh, honored. And, and basically, you know, beauty is fleeting. Come on. You know, uh, uh, I don't want <clears throat> to go there. I might get sidetracked. <clears throat> but, you know, those, you know, um, I can't, you know, you know, back in the, not that I was alive then, you know, but back in the 40s or 50s, can you guys name some, um, you know, famous women? Like, I don't know, Elizabeth, was it Elizabeth Taylor? And what, what years are those? Anybody else? I don't mean to look in a particular section or anything. No, no, no. <clears throat> huh? I mean, but you know these 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 uh, <coughs> uh, women that in their age and then and there's in their uh, 80s and 90s and and it's it's great that they still put makeup and all. Uh, but it's pretty much you know, I think I'm getting in trouble right here. <laughs> <coughs> but honestly, they're just hiding the uh, you know the aging process. The, the reality is we're all gonna get older. We're all gonna meet our maker. Come on, somebody. But what we do with this life is what really matters. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> and so it says that we should take heart that people should live in a manner that recognizes their mortality. In Psalm 39, verse 4 to 6, I've been in the, you know, um, <clears throat> I've been in the book of Psalms for a while. And I came across this verse that somewhat gripped my heart. Psalm 39, verse 4 to 6 says this. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. <clears throat> Let me know how fleeting is my life. Isn't that correct, Brother Mike? Can you remind me? That, that, <clears throat> that, that to number my days and let me know how, how fleeting uh, is my life. You have made my days a mere hand breath. You know what a hand breath is? It's a, it's a, a form of measurement right here. They would measure things with their hand and saying that <clears throat> you have made my days a mirror. That's it. That's about it. This compared to eternity is nothing. Everybody put out your hand like this and remind yourself this is a hand breath. This is symbolic of the length of your life. But my, the Bible says my times are in his hands. Amen. You know, I don't know if I'm going to live to 120 or whatever. But if I follow him, then my time's in this hand. But ultimately, this is symbolic. A measurement of time. <clears throat> Isn't that what it says? It says, number of my days, let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a mere hand breath. Put, it, put, put your hands out again. That's about the measurement of your life. Now look at your hands and ask yourself, what am I using my hands for? Can someone say amen? Am I using it to bring others down or am I using it to lift others up? Am I using it to hinder the work of God or am I using it to extend the kingdom of God? Come on, somebody. <clears throat> and are there hindering forces out there? Of course there are. But Lord, use my hands for your glory. Can someone say amen? Whatever it is, whatever you find your hand <clears throat> to do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen? <clears throat> the span of many years is nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is a mere shadow as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. And the devil knows that money is a temptation. You know, I, uh, I don't say I'm almost. I mean, what was holding me back? I was in the military making good money. And the next promotion was going to give me more money. And I, I got my degree and I applied to be an officer, <coughs> which was going to be more money. And <coughs> it got, but I, how, how many of you know that? I, but, I, but I had a call in my life. To be a preacher, to be a pastor. And how many of you know uh, I didn't really want the call? <laughs> that I pulled a Jonah. 
But how many of you know that when you go the opposite direction of God's call, you will never be satisfied. You will never be fulfilled. Can someone say amen? And until I fully surrendered to that, <clears throat> and so many times the enemy would put things and dangle things in front of us to lure us off of our destiny because the, un because the <clears throat> understanding is we only have one life to do this. It says the psalmist asked for perspective and awareness regarding the brevity of human life. And point number one, we're just talking about the brevity of life, how brief it is. In Psalm 39.5, the psalmist recognizes the limited scope of human life. Like a breath, it appears only briefly, just briefly. <clears throat> As I uh, look at Cherish's beautiful baby, I remember when that was little Joah. And little Aaliyah, I remember Heather was not leading worship. Heather was back there in the nursery. Come on, somebody. And now Aaliyah's behind the computer working the online. Come, things fly so fast. Sister Regina, you remember when this cute little bundle of joy, Charles, when he was little and you were changing his diapers? Was it just like yesterday? Now he's driving a church van and he's a, he's a man now. Things go by so fast. <clears throat> but they've, they've, they've kept their faith. They kept their promise to be in the house, Lord, and God is beginning to use them for eternal matters. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> See, you only have a one life to live. Spend it wisely. You and I only have one life to live. Spend it wisely. Time is short here today. <clears throat> and never know if you would be gone tomorrow. I believe in God to protect me for days on end. But the, that's why I said, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. There's enough trouble for today. Amen? And if, 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 if COVID taught anybody this, it thought, taught us how to rely on God just for the day. Because tomorrow, everything changes. Things are always changing. I tell you one thing that doesn't change. Get this in your spirit, my spirit. There's one thing, Sister Jolly, that doesn't change. It is the faithfulness of God. Can someone say amen? And that is the lie of the devil that will try to insert things in our mind to think that, oh, you know, the world has an upper hand and they're going to lock you down and, you know, <clears throat> you can't do the will of God and you can't prosper. And I would say to the devil, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. How can I rely on a government who's in trillion dollars in debt? You're going to tell me how I can prosper when you can't even handle your own finances? Come on, somebody. I deal with the God who paves his roads with gold. Can someone say amen? The silver and gold is his. The cattle on the thousand hills is his, brother Ron. He's more than able to supply all of my needs. So why am I worrying about what the government doing when I should be just concerned about what you are doing in my life? Can someone say amen? Because if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you as well. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> but the problem is, can you put this up, uh, Heather? The, the title of the message is One Life. <clears throat> but I want to put this... Uh, at, See, what happened as I was coming uh, to church this morning, I was getting ready to get ready, and I had the sermon notes all prepared, and, uh, you know, I said that the title message would be One Life, and this dropped in my spirit. And, and I heard the Holy Spirit, says, I believe the Holy Spirit says, other lanes and other lovers. Other lanes and other, can you put a picture of the lane? <clears throat> other lanes and other lovers. Is that we are going in one direction. Come on, somebody help me. This is reality. We see it all the time. The prodigal son is there. And next thing you know, he takes, he, he has a love. That's why the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Because if there's a part of it that doesn't love him, how many of you know you can be susceptible to take other lanes? Can someone say amen? And that lane is not going to lead to your destination. If you, don't, if you don't think that's true, watch the movie Home Alone. Come on, somebody. He took the wrong flight. He ended up in the wrong destination. And all swarms of things, <clears throat> these two guys tried to take his life. I can't believe I'm making a spiritual analogy out of this, but it's true. <clears throat> 
There's a narrow path. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. Narrow is the path that leads to life. But only a few, you know, come on, somebody. It seemed like, people, you know, like, wow, and the grace of God covers me. And they're laying it. They can do anything and whatever. It's like, I, 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 don't, I don't want, that's not, the, that's not the kind of freedom I want. Can someone say amen? I want the freedom in the spirit where he's pleased with my life. And I'm going in the direction that he's calling me to do. That is the best lane. Can someone say amen? That lane is the lane that on the road to Emmaus. And a lot of times you feel like Jesus is not with you. And all of a sudden he was with you all the time. And he begins to reveal himself. And next thing you know, we're not our hearts burning within us. Can someone say amen? Does anyone have burning love in your heart <clears throat> for the things of God? <clears throat> so we only have one life. James 4, 13 says this. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, <clears throat> carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> But you know what, the, the, the reason why it's <clears throat> important to know the will of God is because we don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. But if we make God decisions today, how I many you know we can avoid the things that God wants us to avoid tomorrow because He is in our tomorrow and He knows what's coming. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> You know, I, f I really felt led. And if you went to school, it doesn't mean you were disobedient. It was just for me. You know, I, uh, Thursday I was at school. And I really felt strongly the Lord says, hey, you know, take off Friday. And I took off Friday, so which is the next day. And I took off Friday. <clears throat> and so Thursday I was at work. Friday. Uh, no, was it Friday that I take off? Yeah. And then I saw Charles and, and Alan. And the day that I took off from school on a Friday, you know, well, I enjoyed my time with my wife, did some projects, and we cooked up some steaks. And, you know, I just, it was the will of God. Could I use the extra day of money? Yeah, but the Lord said, take the day off. And then I come to youth night, and then Brother Charles was telling me and Sister Regina that they locked the school down on Friday because, uh, was it, what, Alan, was it a vogue or something? Somehow the wind shifted. <clears throat> Terry, you must be praying for me, my family, because we've been avoiding fogs and volcanic eruptions and all kinds of stuff lately. <clears throat> and so my point is that, you know, eat, you know, give us this day our what? Our daily bread. And listen real good. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, <clears throat> but my word will never pass away. Amen? And <clears throat> that we should, uh, uh, that it talks about how we should <clears throat> um, that we should live off, we should not live on, on bread alone, but what? But every word that proceeds. So listen real good. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. We need to read the word. Amen? But it also says, do not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you for your life? For your tomorrow? Can someone say amen? <clears throat> and so did I, I read my devotional that day. I read the book. <clears throat> I read the Bible. But I also heard the voice and said, take off the next day. Come on. And maybe that's for me, you know. But if you went to work, that doesn't mean you didn't hear the voice of God. Maybe your immune system was better than mine. I, it, that's, that's, that's beside the point. But we should live <clears throat> off of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm here today not because somebody told me to be here, forced me to be here. This is just what the word of the Lord told me. Can someone say amen? But now it's people are like, well, I don't feel like it, or I was hurt, or I was this, or I was that. And it's like, live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth, of his mouth, not your feelings. Can someone say amen? Because if you consult your feelings, you'll get deceived. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> That's what happened with Adam and Eve. And so it says here, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist, a vapor. One translation said, a morning fog that appears for a little while and then poof, vanishes. That's our life. Just gone in an instant, but <clears throat> have we done everything that God is calling us to do? 
<clears throat> and you know, when the other week, many of you guys know the story, I, I, I took off again. <laughs> Like, Pastor, are you taking all our days off, man? <laughs> but it was, a, I think, what day was it? It was a Wednesday, and so I, I felt like the Lord says, hey, just go on a hiking date uh, with your wife. And we went to um, <clears throat> Volcano, and we had breakfast there. And then <clears throat> we were walking. For some reason, we walked down a trail that we've never been on before. And we took a lot of pictures. Man, it was beautiful, peaceful. And then we got to the bottom at Holly Mau Mau Crater. <laughs> and then Heather was like, man, this feels a little extra hot today. It feels like lava. And we didn't think nothing of it, you know. And then <clears throat> we went up the hill. And then we get a text from Tihadi and I think Terry. And says, Pastor, are you still at the volcano? Because, you know, we saw the pictures and uh, it just started erupting. I was like, what do you mean? And we just so happened, we had a Bible study here. And so <clears throat> we had left there early and we ended up at the church. And so we got the text at the church. And how many of you know, uh, Going to church can save your life. Can someone say amen? <laughs> In more ways than one. Come on, somebody help me out this morning. But we left there early because we had <laughs> to be in church or wanted to be in church. You know, thank God for church. You know, I want my wife to be like taking pictures and, you know, lava exploding in the back. <clears throat> but, you know, it was, it was actually, we were in, in, by Holly Mau Mau Crater. And I, but I believe, you know, you know, living a God life, following the voice of the Holy Spirit and His principles. Come on, somebody. That's the best role. That's the best lane to be in. Amen? And then, I, and then <clears throat> it seems like I'm spiritualized and everything, but I, I like to think that my, my life is not random. And I was thinking, I mean, you, you, that is pretty crazy that we're literally on the, on the uh, crater of Hale Mau Mau. And then and after, an hour after we leave, it, it, it erupts. Come on. And you can say, well, it didn't explode. I mean, it still erupted. But the fact that, you know, it could have just got even crazier. We don't know. Earthquake, fall in the cracks or whatever. <clears throat> but I'm saying, man, God's will is the best deal in town. Amen? And we, we were down going down the Hale Mau Mau Crater. And my, my thought is, and I want, maybe is this for me. And I felt like, God, why were we going down that trail? And, you know, I mean, the, the, the natural precedes the spiritual many times you can see it in the in the book of acts they saw that the in the cloud was coming and rain was coming and that's also spiritual rain <clears throat> but i just thought you know that you know what path are we on what trail are we on is the trail that we're on is it leading to a, a volcanic eruption in the spirit is it leading to a a, a, a hotter flame a, <clears throat> a hotter fire for god in our lives or is it, are we taking another lane that's moving away from it? And it was just an <clears throat> awesome experience. In the Amplified in James 4.13, it says here, You do not know the least thing about what may happen in your life tomorrow. And question, it says, What is secure in your life? You are merely a vapor like a puff of smoke or a wisp of steam from a cooking pot. That's kind of a weird paraphrase. That is visible for a little while, <clears throat> while, and then vanishes into thin air. Love this brother right here. All the things he, him and his family are doing for the kingdom, and all of you, what you're doing for the kingdom. And I mean, we, I just take for granted that I'm going to see him tomorrow. And I hope I do. And I hope I see you and you and you. But we don't know what tomorrow may bring. <clears throat> and it says here, I want to say that we only have one life to live and one life to fulfill the call of God on our lives. Why not start today pursuing your God-given <clears throat> destiny? And we never know what tomorrow may bring. It says that, <clears throat> it says here in this verse, in Psalm 39, it says, He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. Not knowing who will get it. Some of you have some money, some may have a lot. Maybe some of you are just working for more. But ultimately, <clears throat> in the end, uh, will it really matter? Yes, we want to have, the Bible says, a wise, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So having wealth is, 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 is not bad as long as wealth doesn't have you. Can someone say amen? But, you know, I had this thought. I was thinking about this verse right here. <clears throat> I want to read this passage again. It says... <coughs> 
<clears throat> Psalm 39, 4 to 6. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. He has made my days a mere hand breath. Each man's life is but a breath. And then verse 6, man is a mere shadow as he goes to and fro. <clears throat> he bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. And I don't want to get too personal, but there's some, you know, I, I um, work, working at a school, you just, the kids, it seemed like <clears throat> they're omniscient and they know everything going on in the community. <laughs> and they said, you know, did you hear what happened uh, a couple weeks ago on the back roads over here? That a guy, a young guy, probably about my age, and him and his friend on his UTV, and took the turn and avoided a, a truck. It flipped, cracked his head on the <clears throat> rock, broke his neck. Gone. He lives behind <clears throat> uh, children, and the, the, the children were somewhat estranged. But what, what hit me was this, you know, people were saying that, man, it wasn't even a day that passed. Thanks for listening, by the way, girl. A day didn't even pass after the dad passed away that, that, that children were storming the house. Whether grabbing motorcycles, whatever, material stuff. And it, and it just reminded me of our brevity of life. He, a man is mere shadow as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, <clears throat> not knowing who will get it. What are we living for? Are we living for what truly matters? Can someone say amen? Is it okay to have a boat, a nice car, and go on vacation? Of course. Nothing wrong with that. We should enjoy life while we have it. But more importantly, we must prioritize those things that really <clears throat> matter. Because God has put eternity in our hearts. Amen? If we're filled with the Holy Spirit, guess what we're filled with? We're filled with God. We're filled with Him. And guess what we're filled with? We're filled with a sense of eternity. I read of a successful sports commentator. <clears throat> he was asked how he got to where he is today at age 53 with a successful career and talk show. I won't mention his name. He said when he was, he got successful to that point, and I'm not saying this is a degree of success, but for it's just the point I'm trying to make here. He said that when he was a 24-year-old man caring for his 90-year-old grandpa, <clears throat> he looked at his elderly grandpa and said, he began to think, I'm 24 years old. I'm in my prime of my youth right now. And this isn't going to last very long. One day I'll be there as an elderly person towards the latter part of my life. I'm 24 now, but one day, you know what, I'm going to be there. So he began to take life seriously <clears throat> to pursue his dreams intentionally everybody say intentionally i want to deposit in each and every one of us this morning including myself that we intentionally go after the call and destiny that god has for our lives can someone say amen intentionally <clears throat> and with much discipline eternity and brevity hit his heart that day we too will get older one day and toward the end of our lives, many will ask themselves these questions. Did, it, did I live a life of significance and impact for the kingdom? By becoming all I was supposed to become in the Lord. We ask ourselves the, this question today. Will I truly lay everything down to fulfill my fullest God-given potential? If that's even a word. The fullest <clears throat> or did I allow distractions, discouragement, or even deception derail my destiny to take other lanes? What am I doing today, I must ask myself, to develop and go after God's highest calling and full potential for my life? I can begin today. Can someone say amen? That, that doesn't matter what the canker worm stole yesterday, but we have today. We have today a new day, a new season. <clears throat> One day you and I will be that 90-year-old man or woman hunched over, walking down the street. Will we, be at will we be at peace with all the decisions we made and direction in life we took 
to impact this earth for eternity. <clears throat> we will all have to wrestle with many of these questions. As Heather preached a few months ago, she preached a message on living with no regrets. I can honestly say, I don't mean this arrogantly and boastfully, up until just right, right now, if I was to leave this earth today, I have no regrets. I have no regrets of marrying the woman I married. I got no regrets of uh, leaving the military to come here. Is it challenging? Is it hard? Are there so-called may, maybe better employment places to be in this world, in the natural? But right now, at this point in my life, I'm, I, I'm just saying, I have no regrets. But I, am I, am I, have I fulfilled my God-given destiny? <clears throat> no, God has more. Can someone say amen? And I don't want to stop right here. I, I want to be a better husband, a better pastor, a better preacher, a better PE teacher. I, I, I want to be a, a better citizen in this community. Can someone say amen? God has more in store. And this morning, I want to spark your appetite and mine for your destiny, your God-given destiny. We were not created just for 9 to 5. Can someone say amen? There's more. <clears throat> And even if you have a 9 to 5, put as much as you can into that 9 to 5 for the kingdom and the glory of God. Can someone say amen to that? <clears throat> About a week ago, I had this Facebook memory pop up on my Facebook, a post that I posted about a year ago. But uh, About a week ago, the memory came up and... I had posted this, and so many times when I post stuff, I'm not preaching. I actually put it in there to preach to myself. Amen? Well, you can, <clears throat> you know what? David says, David, it said in the Psalm, Psalm 42, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Which basically, and he says, you know, why so downcast, oh my soul? He was preaching to his own spirit. Amen? <clears throat> so when these things come up, I'm like, yes, preach to me. Amen? Because there's times where you might not have your pastor, you might not have your spouse there, you might not have a brother or sister there to encourage you. But guess what? You have the Holy Spirit in you, and you are able to encourage yourself in the Lord. <clears throat> and I wrote this. In the kingdom, you are either, either pressing or resting, but never regressing. And this is not a play on words. I, I, I like it when it rhymes because it's easy to remember, but in the kingdom... We're not talking in the world or in the flesh, but in the kingdom, you're either pressing or resting, but never regressing. God is calling us forward, and I posted the definition of regressing beneath the post. And regressing means this, and many of you already know, but it's a, I want to paint a picture. <clears throat> regressing is to move backward or to go back. This morning, we're talking about one life to live. We're talking about the brevity of life, and when I get to the end of my life, will I have progressed to where God wanted me to be? <clears throat> and to regress is this, to move backward or to go back. Regress means to revert to an earlier or less advanced state of form. It's as if, you know, you, you see the progression of a caterpillar to a cocoon to a beautiful butterfly that can fly as pretty, pretty colors. It wouldn't make any sense for that butterfly to say, you know what, let me regress and go back to the cocoon and back to be an earth-walking caterpillar. Come on, somebody. God is doing a great work in you and I, and I pray that we don't backslide, we don't go back to the familiar, <clears throat> but we step out in faith and go towards everything that God has for our lives. Amen? Regress is the act of going back, backward <clears throat> movement. Amen. Brother Andrew, if you see me going back, just grab my shirt and just encourage me in the Lord. He says, no, Pastor, we're going forward. We're not just staying here in Pahala. We got to go out to Ocean View. And who knows, maybe we'll go to a volcano. Come on, somebody. Because if we lay stagnant, see, a river flows. A pond that stagnates. Come on, somebody. When God pours out His Spirit in you, it's to flow through you into others. But when we take the blessing, we take the gifts, and we keep it to ourselves, we turn into a pond. I went, we went to the Narrows, and man, the, the water was so pristine and fresh, <clears throat> and we felt so refreshed. You could drink the water right there. 
Anybody ever been to Punalu? I'll dare you to go to lay stand and go in that pond and drink the water. It's been there for years and years and years. The calling and destiny and gifts on some of our lives have been there for years and years and begins to stagnate. And you know what? If we don't do a, find an, listen real good, if we don't find an outlet for the power of God, come on somebody, that turns into a stench. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> We're here to encourage one another in the calling of God in our lives. So we're talking about you're either pressing or resting, but never regressing to go back. Let me say this. You don't, yeah, listen real good. The, the Bible says we've been studying on Thursday <clears throat> about faith and hope. And one of the script on Thursday, we have been talking about living by faith. And this past Thursday, we looked at this verse in Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 39. And it reads this, so do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. When do you receive what he has promised? After you have done the will of God. <clears throat> Everything is tied into the will of God, not the will of man, not the will of the government, not the will of the Antichrist. Come on, somebody. It's the will of God. Thank you for that, amen, Brother Mike. That's what it is, the will of God. Jesus said, I didn't come to do my will, but I came to do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. <clears throat> so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Verse 37, for in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. Verse 38, but my righteous one will live by faith. Amen. And this is what faith looks like. <clears throat> but my righteous one will live by faith. So check this out. Faith is forward, never backward. And it says here, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. If he shrinks back. And many times I have shrink back from the call of God. Why? Because, man, it's too scary. It's too hard. But how many of you know when he comes back, he, what will he be looking for? Will he find faith on the earth? You know why it's good to walk in faith? You know why it's good to live by faith? Because faith, all faith is, is depending upon him. Amen? Fear creeps in when faith is off of him. Come on, somebody. <clears throat> and but we all deal with that. And that's why um, God had to say to Joshua, uh, do not fear. Be courageous and do not fear. Walk in faith. And he says, I will not be pleased with him if he shrinks back. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Amen. Do you believe in the God-given destiny that God placed upon your life? Get a picture of it. Let God so plant that dream in your heart. This morning, I want to be a dream encourager, not a dream killer in your life. It was a simple reminder for me and those at Bible side that faith is about persevering and not just about believing for stuff. Sometimes we equate faith with just believing for stuff, but in this context, faith was <clears throat> and faith is fuel for us to fulfill our destiny and the will of God for our lives, and we are to continually to move forward and not backwards and to progress and not regress. Can someone say amen? You can write this down as a reminder for yourself. You don't need faith to go backwards. Faith is not required to go backwards. If we are supposed to live by faith, we should be moving forward. You and I only have a one life to fulfill the call of God. May we persevere in pursuing it. My pastor, you know, um, he preached many sermons in Louisiana. But one quote that stuck with me, Micah, one quote that stuck with me, he kept telling me, he looked at me, he says, you know what, you have a great call on your life. Everybody has a great call on your life. He said this to me, a calling, a calling is great only when greatly pursued. A calling is great only when greatly pursued. So many may have a call on their lives, but they are not pursuing it. <clears throat> Acts 13, 36 says this in closing. 
Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep, which means he died. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. That's the brevity of David's life. But I love this passage of Scripture because it reminds me that I'm not going home until I serve God's purpose in my life. Can someone say amen? So number one, we talk about the brevity of life. Number two is uh, we want to do a destiny check. Are we headed in the direction of our destiny? <clears throat> so Acts 13, 36, now when David had served God's purposes in his own generation, he completed the mission, assignment, he allowed character to be formed, and he, he, came, he overcame uh, his shortcomings. But when he served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep, and he was buried, and he went to be the Lord. <clears throat> when you, when your time, when my time to go to the grave, I want to say this. I want to say this, and don't forget it. I want you and I to rob the grave of any unfulfilled potential. Can someone say, does that make sense? Because we're all going to be destined there one day. But when you get there, I want us to rob the grave of any unfulfilled potential. Leave it all here on earth. You know how they say in, bo in boxing, leave it all on the mat. Leave it all in the ring. <clears throat> Don't go to the grave with a desire for a church to build. Don't go to the grave with a sermon that you could have preached. Don't go to the grave with a city that you could change. Don't go to the grave with a business that you could start for the kingdom. Don't go to the grave with health to improve, wealth to build, a book to write, a song to write, a song to sing, an album to produce, godly kids to raise, and a destiny to fill. Don't do it. Leave it all here. Your potential is for people around you. Can someone say amen? Rob the grave of the unfulfilled potential. Leave it all here on the earth. You can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. I want to say this. Live your max potential in God. Every time I'm going to look at Charles, I'm going to remind myself, Pastor, live your max potential, but only because your dog's name is Max. But live your max potential. We all have potential. We all have a destiny. We all have a purpose. I believe this morning God is stirring us this morning. I have more I want to share, but I just want to whet our appetites for the destiny and the desire because life is short. Amen? I know we know that, but sometimes we, we forget about that. Next thing you know, man, five years, ten years went by, and like, man, man, I, I should have finished my degree. I should have taken that class. I, I should have been more consistent in this area. I, I should have invested, or uh, I should have gone to Bible school, or I, I should have been more faithful at church and used my gifts and grow in my gifts. I, I mean, we should have bought a property in Ocean View. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be like 30 years from now. It's like all the property is locked up, and now, now it's like $200,000 for an acre in Ocean View. And now we want to extend the kingdom, but oh my gosh, that's kind of, a, you know what I mean? Faith is now. Amen? What is God calling you and I to do? And may we respond in faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, God, I pray that you plant eternity in our hearts. Even now, Lord God, begin to speak what's proceeding of your mouth. Lord God, I pray that you give us a hunger for your written word, but also give us a hunger for your spoken word. If you're in this place, all eyes closed, head bowed, no, no, no one looking around, you say, Pastor, man, there's something stirring in my heart. <clears throat> and I know I haven't been as hungry for my destiny, but this morning I feel a spark lit in me. And I just want prayer to be consistent, prayer to go after this with resolve. I want to go after my destiny. I want to go after my calling. No one looking around. If that's you, will you just lift your hands high and just wave it at me? Anybody in this place? Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, may you wash over us, God. May we focus on those things that really matter. And God, for those who are already doing the things that you've called them to do, may you give them an extra jolt of encouragement. May you give them an extra jolt of perseverance. And Lord God, may you give them an extra challenge to step out 
of, of, on faith for even more in their lives for your kingdom. Father, I thank you for this time that we can come together and be honest with one another, to challenge one another, to grow with one another. Lord God, that we, we want to be used to extend your kingdom and your truth and your work here, Lord God, in the Ka'u area. Lord Jesus, may you find us faithful, Lord God, when you return. Fill us fresh and anew this morning with your Holy Spirit. God, we love you. We thank you, and we'll be careful to give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen, amen, amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand.